Hi there, in this video we will learn about the nomenclature of alkyl halides and aryl halides. Let's get started with the common names of alkyl halides. Let's start with the normal group. You remember hydrocarbons? When you have a straight alkane chain, yeah, that's when you have N alkane, right? So this N, small n prefix is for the normal group, right? We call it N-propane. So if I have four carbons, we shall call it N-butane. But if we remove one hydrogen from here, it becomes an N-alkyl group, correct? So three carbons, I can call it N-propyl. There are one, two, three, four. Four carbons, so N-butyl. Now, the interesting part is the common names of alkyl halides are derived by naming the alkyl group followed by the name of halide. Let's try to understand it with an example. Let's say to this three carbon alkyl chain, which is a straight chain. So, I attach, let's say a chlorine. What shall be the name? N-propyl chloride. You got it. Correct. Similarly, now try this one. You have four carbons out here. So, it was N-butyl and if I put, let's say, a bromo group here, what shall be the name? N-butyl bromide. There you go, you got it. Now, let's level it up. Let's talk about iso group. What are iso groups? So, one methyl group is attached to the second last carbon of the straight chain. When we were talking about alkanes in hydrocarbons, you remember here you have one branching in this way. So, you can look at it like this. Maybe you can call it a second carbon. We should call it second last carbon only when we are having an alkyl group. So, ideally you can see that here, one branching on the second carbon itself, we were calling it isobutane. Similarly, one, two, three, four, five. And here we have on the second carbon branching of a methyl group. So, we were calling it isopentane. So, this is how we were doing the common names in alkanes. Now, if I remove one hydrogen from here, okay, let me remove one hydrogen from here or one hydrogen from here. So, do you understand we will get an alkyl group? So, let's say three carbons like this, we will have isopropyl group, right? One, two, three, four, four carbons like this, we will have isobutyl group. How many carbons you have? One, two, three, four, five. So, you will have isopentyl group. Now that you're clear about the isoalkyl group, let's try this one now. If I put a chloro here, what shall be the name? Isopropyl chloride, right? Let's see the second one. So let's say I put an iodine here, so the name shall be, you got it, isobutyl iodide. There you go. Okay, a fluoro here, come on, rapid fire. Fluoro here. So total five carbon, second last carbon having a methyl group, fluoro is there. So we'll call it isopentyl fluoride. Now, if we talk about neo group, you should have two methyl groups, not one, but two now attached to the second last carbon of the straight chain. So when talking about hydrocarbons, we have seen neopentane, right? Clearly this carbon, which is the second carbon, out here, you can call it a second last carbon also, but like I said, it's for the alkyl group that we say second last carbon. So, this second carbon has two methyl groups. So, yeah, the name can be neopentane, but if I remove one hydrogen from here, now you have neopentyl. Okay, you have an alkyl group. What kind of alkyl group it is? Neopentyl. Now, to this neopentyl group, let's say I put an iodine like this. What shall be the name? Yeah. Neopentyl iodide, that's right. Simple, right? Okay, now I have a very interesting question for you. Check these compounds out here, okay? Take a moment to absorb them. Now, tell me one thing. Can I use the prefix iso for this one? Or neo for this second compound out here? Hmm? Well, let's quickly do a recap. What was an iso group? you need to have a methyl group on the second last carbon of the straight chain, right? In order to call it an iso group. Similarly, the second last carbon should have two methyl groups, right? So if halogen was here, this was the second last carbon, check, right? Which should have two methyl groups for it to be named as neo. So you can see if this is where the halogen is attached, clearly the second last carbon is not attached to the methyl groups at all, right? So rather than using the term iso or neo here, we have different prefixes coming up. 
first prefix coming your way is sec for secondary group. So, what is a secondary group? When the alpha carbon attached to two other carbons and that's when you use the prefix sec. For example, check this out. Now, we're going to call this halogen as our group of interest. So, this carbon is an alpha carbon which is attached to two other carbons. Check. And let me give you a quick recap. Alpha carbon is that carbon to which a functional group is attached. And in this case, the carbon on which the halogen is attached. And if that carbon is attached to two other carbons, we are going to use the prefix sec. And hence, the name shall be sec butyl halide or we can call it secondary butyl halide. Check this one on your own. What can you name this? So, you can see halogen is attached to this carbon which is attached to two other carbons. We can use sec. So, the name shall be sec pentyl halide. Now, in a similar fashion, if we talk about a tertiary group, what's a tertiary group? Again, look at this carbon, okay? Say our halogen is attached here, okay? So, this becomes your alpha carbon now and this carbon is attached to 1, 2 and 3, 3 other carbons. So, we can call it a tertiary butyl halide, okay? Similarly, you can see this carbon is attached to the halogens. This becomes our alpha carbon. If it is attached to three other carbons, then we are using the prefix tertiary. So, we got it. What is tertiary group? When the alpha carbon is attached to three other carbons, right? And it is represented as tert, like this, T-E-R-T -E for tertiary. Okay, now time to practice a question. Here is a question which says, which of the following halides is isobutyl bromide? Feel free to pause the video and try this question. All right, hope you could do it. Let's see option A. Option A, this is the carbon which is attached to the halogen. So, this is our alpha carbon which is attached to two alkyl groups. That means it's a secondary carbon. So, the name shall be secondary butyl bromide. Okay, next one, option B. You can see that it's a simple alkyl chain, so N-butyl bromide, certainly not what we were hunting. Let's check option C. Option C, look at this carbon which is attached to halogen. So, this carbon becomes the alpha carbon which is attached to 3-alkyl group. That means it's a tertiary group. So, how many total carbons? 1, 2, 3, 4. So, it's a tertiary butyl bromide and that means we are just left with option D which should be our answer, but let's check. Okay, so we can see that this is our second last carbon which is attached to this methyl. Clearly, this falls in the definition of isobutyl bromide. So, yes, it is option D that becomes the answer to this question. Okay, so far we discussed the different ways of writing common names of alkyl halides. Now it's time to solve a couple of questions on IUPAC nomenclature. Look at this one. Now I have given you the name and you have to draw the structure of this compound, okay? So you have 1 bromo, 4 secondary butyl, 2 methyl benzene. Okay, wow. Let's get started, okay? You can pause the video and try it on your own. I hope you could do it. Well, let's start with benzene. So, you draw the benzene. At first position, there is bromo attached. Let's put bromo at the first position. There you go. At the fourth position, we have secondary butyl group. So, now our knowledge of secondary butyl is coming to use. So, we have four secondary butyl. Check, this is the carbon which is attached to the benzene. So, this carbon is attached to a 2-alkyl group. Clearly, it's a 2-degree carbon or what we can call as a secondary carbon. And hence, at fourth position, now we have placed secondary butyl group. All right. So far, so good. Now, next one is easy. 2-methyl. All right. So, at the second position, let's place methyl. So, this becomes 1-bromo, 4-secondary butyl, 2-methyl benzene. Okay, now another bonus question for you. Pause the video, do try this question and then let's solve it together. Hope you're done. First thing is, let's start with the numbering. Now, there can be various numberings, right? Either you can number it like this, that you are numbering fluoro as 1 and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 like this. The other possibility is this, where you're numbering this chloro as 1 and then following up 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 like this. 
then other possibilities you are numbering this bromo as one so let's go now in clockwise one two three four five six like this or you can number it like this where ido now is getting the first number and you're doing it anti-clockwise one two three four five and six all right so here clearly locant rule the lowest locant rule if you remember talks about that your number should be lowest which is in all four of them then we go to the next number so the next positioning is three here which is clearly not the lowest locant because we can see there is a two locant two is possible so second one is still the lowest locant even the third one is and the fourth one is but clearly you can rule out the third structure as we have the third locant as four so the lowest locant possible is one two three so why not We'll go with the lowest locant here. 1, 2, 3. All right. And here also it's 1, 2, 3. All right. It's a 50-50. Either it's second or the fourth structure, right? So once we've taken care of this lowest locant rule, wherein the functional group that is halogens here are placed at the lowest numbers. Now, in order to break the tie, we will see that the first number should be given to either C for chloro or number 1 will be given to I for ido clearly chloro comes before ido right this second structure wins so this is following the lowest locant rule and correctly following the alphabetical order so the locants are now set now what we can do is start writing the name as per the alphabetical order so as per the alphabetical order we write bromo first then chloro then fluoro then ido so check it out we have 2 bromo, 1 chloro, 5 fluoro, 3 ido, benzene. Very, very interesting, isn't it?